Well, we're in Judges, and we're looking at Samson. And you remember that Samson was uh, set aside as a Nazarite from birth, where he was to not drink any alcoholic beverage or cut the hair on his head. And God had a plan for him, and his plan was to take out the Philistines. And as we've studied Samson so far, he took out 30 over a riddle. He took out a great slaughter, which is unnumbered for us, over the burning of his wife and her father. And uh, now we're starting in chapter 15 to take a look at how 3,000 men of Judah uh, were felt intimidated because they were under the bondage of the Philistines, that they wanted to get rid of Samson because of what he had done to the Philistines in destroying their crops and killing their men. So we find them uh, asking Samson to be bound and he agrees to do that. He says, as long as you don't kill me, go ahead and bind me and turn me over to them. Uh, when Samson gets to the Philistines, uh, he takes and breaks his bonds without any problem because the spirit of the Lord came upon him. I want you to notice that, verse 14, the spirit of the Lord came upon Samson. This was not Samson's own strength as a strong man. This was God's supernatural power working through Samson. And then after he kills another thousand Philistines, he's thirsty and God splits open the land and gives him a drink. And it tells us at that point in this particular episode that he judged for 20 years in the land that had been promised by God to the sons of Israel. Now, as we look at chapter 16, it's important for us to look at a map. And so we're going to do that right now and see that Samson is in the area uh, that had been given over to uh, Judah and also is near Gaza, which is occupied by the Philistines and uh, is over towards the coast. And it tells us that, uh, again, Samson uses bad judgment and uh, seeks out a prostitute. And uh, when he does, he has relations with her. And uh, he goes into the land of the Gezites. And uh, it says that he loved a woman in the valley of Sorek named Delilah. Now, before we go much further, I want to tell you several things. Because we've watched so many movies and so many books have been written uh, about Delilah that are fiction, uh, that we need to be sure we understand what the Bible really says about Delilah. Uh, first of all, many people have depicted Delilah uh, as a Philistine, but the scripture doesn't really tell us that she is, although it's likely that she is. Uh, also, many people have depicted her as a prostitute since he had gone into a prostitute prior to this, but nothing in the scriptures tell us that she was a prostitute, although it's possible that she was. Uh, some have said that she was a temple prostitute, uh, uh, but the scripture doesn't tell us that, and uh, it's not likely that she was. And then we know that uh, the scripture tells us uh, that uh, Delilah, not a prostitute, not, not a woman that uh, was necessarily a Philistine, uh, that she was killed when Samson brings down the house. <laughs> and... And nothing, nothing in the Bible tells us that that's the case. As a matter of fact, the last time that we see Delilah in the scriptures is over in verse 18, I believe it is, uh, where we find that uh, once she finally tricked Samson uh, and the Philistines took Samson away, having gouged out his eyes, that she disappears from the scene. So all of those fantasy stories that have been written uh, that say that she loved Samson and was only intending to weaken him, uh, but that she had great remorse for what she had done or any of those things that we've seen and heard in fictional books is, are not scriptural. They may be true, but they're not scriptural. So we find that uh, three times she tried to trick Samson into telling the uh, secret of his strength. I'm not sure Samson knew what the secret of his strength really was, uh, but in any case, 
he evidently anticipated that it was the strength which came from the hair of his head and not being cut off and being faithful to his Nazarite pledge. In any case, uh, in verses 6 through 9, we find uh, fresh cords could not hold Samson. We find in verses 10 through 13, new ropes could not hold Samson. We find in verses 17 through 21, uh, excuse me, in uh, verses 13 through 16, that uh, seven locks braided in his hair with a pin could not hold Samson. And we find that in verses 17 through 21, that he finally, because of his great love for Delilah, uh, winds up telling her that it's in the hair of his head. We find out that that came in verse uh, of, by just absolutely being nagged by him, by her. You know, look at 17 through 21 and you'll find it's the nagging that finally made him give in. It uh, was grieving him <laughs> that she kept nagging. Find that in verse, I believe, 16. Uh, and so we find uh, the Proverbs that says, you know, that a woman's like a, a, a dripping leak from the roof <laughs> with her nagging. <laughs> it's kind of true here. In any case, uh, Samson's hair begins to grow back. They're mocking and, and calling him names and making sport of him. It's party time in uh, the Philistines' territory. It tells us there's 3,000 Philistines on the roof, no telling how many below the roof where Samson was. Uh, but Samson grabs hold of the columns, and God answers his prayer when he answer, asks in verse 28, O oh God, and uh, God gives him the strength to pull down the pillars and the uh, Philistines are killed there. So what do we learn from this episode from the scriptures? Well, we know that Samson uh, made some real bad mistakes morally. We know that Samson made some real bad mistakes spiritually. We know that uh, it takes two ways for love to really work. Now, let me say that to you again. It takes two ways to make love really work. Samson loved Delilah, even to the point that he would give up uh, his Nazarite uh, beliefs. But Delilah didn't love Samson. She would never have allowed anyone to take advantage if she really loved him. Now think about for a minute. When a man and a woman love each other, they find their full potential in that relationship. God loves us. But until we love him, we never realize the full potential of that love relationship. Let me say that again for you. I think it's profound. God loves us, but until we love him, we never experience the full potential of that love relationship. Well, that's my thought for the day. Uh, by the way, you might be surprised, there's a bit of trivia, that during the years 2000 through 2000 and about 20, Delilah became one of the top 10 names that people named their daughters twice. <laughs> now, who'd have thought that a person that was shown as cunning, deceiving, conniving, uh, maybe a prostitute, would name their daughters Delilah? But in the top 10 listing of American girls being named uh, in those later years for, from about 2000 through 2020, uh, it reached the top name over twice. <laughs> That's incredible, isn't it? It shows you where our world is today. Uh, and certainly there's nothing superstitious about the name Delilah. It is a pretty name, but unfortunately for me, I would never name my daughter that because of its connotation. God bless you and have a great day. How can you be sure you're going to heaven? My son said I should never end a message without telling people how they can be sure they're going to heaven. You can find it easily in just a few verses in the book of Romans. Romans 3.23 says, All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Sin is anything that's displeasing to God. We all sin every day. My unclean thoughts, a quick answer to someone that's inappropriate, uh, whatever it might be, we all sin and we all fall short of the glory of God. And 
we know that the wages of sin are death. Romans 6.23 tells us that clearly. The wages of sin are death. We're all guilty of sin, and we all deserve death. In Romans chapter 5, verse 8, it says, God demonstrated his love for us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That's it. That's, that's exactly how God showed his love. He allowed us to see that Jesus Christ, God in the flesh, died for us and rose again to prove that he had the power over death. Now watch this. How do we obtain this? It's one thing to know it. You can have it here in your head, but not down in your heart. You know, here's how we obtain it. If we confess and believe in our heart, God has raised him from the dead, we will be saved. And it says believing it's considered righteousness, not our own righteousness, but Christ's righteousness. With our mouth, we confess. And it says, and, and when we confess, it results in salvation. In verse 13, it goes on and says, whoever will call upon the Lord shall be saved. So if you've confessed your sin and said, yes, Lord, I'm a sinner. Lord, I know that you died for my sins. I'm going to turn from sin and self and to you and to you alone then you can know for certain, if you really meant it, really meant it, then you know that you have eternal life in heaven. I hope that you've prayed a prayer similar to that, that you've acknowledged Christ as your Savior, that you've invited him into your life to be your Lord and your Master, that you've turned from sin and self and received him to be the Lord of your life. And that's my prayer for you. Remember, at the end of this clip, there's an opportunity for you to see the last lesson that we had, and also a clip that says how you can have peace in a broken world with the three circle illustration. It's a wonderful witnessing tool to share with others if they don't know Christ as Savior and to see how God fixed a broken world. God bless you and have a great day.